The Great Pyramid is encoded with super advanced knowledge, pi, phi, and so many other incredible mathematical formulas, advanced knowledge. So when you look into these pyramids, it's a time capsule. It's a time capsule that's describing and telling us for the age we're living in now, who was here in ancient times and how advanced they were. Because at the time that this information, information was encoded into the pyramid, which I'm going to go over real quick. I did a little bit of it last year. Nobody at the time can even conceive or understand anything that was being encoded. They couldn't even understand basic mathematics. Most people were actually illiterate back then. Most people were illiterate. Now, if you were just a worker person, a person that had to go, you know, work in the fields or work uh, for your master, which is what happened back then as well. I mean, slavery is ancient. Slavery is not nothing new. Well, you wouldn't even walk around with clothes on in ancient Egypt because they wanted to make sure you weren't stealing anything from the from the pharaoh. So people didn't have any idea of this advanced mathematical knowledge. They were just trying to survive day by day, literally. The pyramid over time had broken slightly in terms of the amount of power it was generating. It's a power generator. They added this granite stone box later and they put the Ark of the Covenant in it to make a finishing piece to continue to generate electricity. You can see the corner that's broken, that huge chunk. If you can see the far side of the room, there's a gigantic hole or indention in the granite where that chunk of granite flew off and smashed into the wall because an enormous amount of power came through this box at one point, proving again energy inside this chamber. The energy would travel to the apex and go around. The obelisk would capture that wireless energy and transmit it to jets, which would then be transmitted through electrical cables so they can have light, gold electroplating, and everything else. It's ancient technology that we have here. This is ancient stuff. We have we had to plug this stuff in. My computer's got to be plugged in or it's going to die. Back then, they used wireless electricity. Here I am in the King's Chamber again. So you can see that the uh, the speed of light in a vacuum is, you know, right there, 299-792-458 meters per second. And the geographic coordinates for the Grand Gallery of the Great Pyramid is 299-792-458. What, what is that? How is that possible that this can be encoded why would the speed of light be encoded into the Great Pyramid? Now, people say, well, meters per second, that just we just discovered meters. No, actually not. We actually didn't just discover meters. Okay, let me show you why. If you go and look, you'll find that all of these school books are actually wrong and need to be corrected. Because we've actually known for a very long time about these stone tablets discovered with proto-Sumerian cuneiform. Now, Sumerian is where? Mesopotamia, which is where now? Iraq. Guess where these proto-Sumerian cuneiform tablets were discovered in the world? They were discovered in Mexico by the Pyramid of the Sun. What in the world are Sumerian tablets doing in Mexico? And these aren't the only ones. There were some uh, Indian chief that was, just, that was un uh, dug up from his burial chamber in America. And where we live over there, across the pond, right? where he had Sumerian tablets in his pocket. Now, what's interesting about these tablets are, that's, that's the ancient metric system. <laughs> so the metric system is ancient. It's not new. Stop. What they taught, taught you in school, you got to forget about it. Wipe your brain clean and start fresh. This is the original discovery of the metric system here, which came out of Mexico, which originated where? From Sumerian cuneiform tablets. This is why I study the tablets, because they're as close as you can possibly get to the accurate truth. You know how much Wikipedia doesn't like to post this kind of information? If I took the Great Pyramid and I scaled it up 43,200 times, it will fit directly inside of the planet Earth, and each point will touch one part of the inside of the Earth. This is an astonishing discovery. This is actually um, just a, a, a map, a geological survey map of, uh, of Avebury in the U.K., and what's really interesting is it perfectly matches with a, a place on Mars called Cydonia. Cydonia, which means Giza, <laughs> which means Giza. It's pretty interesting, right? So when you take that ordnance map that I showed you before and you take this image from NASA or the European Space Agency, actually, and you look at the area called Cydonia, where the DNM pyramid is, that five-sided pyramid, and the face, the famous face on Mars, and the other remnants up there in the corner. When you overlay it, all of a sudden, 
you get a perfect match down to the millimeter with all the anomalies. It matches perfectly. This is an overlay right here. So what happens is Avebury, that field where the bounds are, is a representation of the same field or this area in Cydonia on Mars. How in the world did they make that connection? And then when you go to Deir Allah in Jordan, you discover that the face on Mars can only be seen from the sky. Hardly anyone ever knew this even existed, that that even existed. It's pretty crazy stuff that that face is a representation of the same one that they discovered on Mars as well in the late 1970s. There's a lot going on out there that you have no clue what it is. How many people have ever heard of the planet Ceres? C-E-R-E-S. Good. That is the planet right after Mars in our solar system. There's more fresh water on Ceres than there is on Earth. C-E-R-E-S. You have Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars, and then Ceres, and then the asteroid belt. That should be mainstream news nonstop. When we sent a lunar, when we sent a, I'm sorry, a, a mission past it with a probe, it took pictures of this planet a few years ago. And on the way towards it, the lights were on. And so they hurried up and tried to say, oh, wait, wait, it was just probably some ice particles. And when we got to the back side, which would be the dark side, no sunlight at all, guess what? The lights were on. Then they tried to, well, we try to figure out, we don't know what it could possibly be. Somehow the ice is glowing, maybe, maybe from radiation. No, people live there. That's what's going on. People are living up there. We keep trying to find planets that are 20 million and 30 million light years away and 7 million. Is it, listen, let me tell you something. The people are living here are right above our heads. They're right above our heads. If you like this video and you want to see more amazing content, go ahead and check out the next video on our channel.